getting to be a big boy. It might sound unbelievable, but did you know that the reason the Caillou cartoon came to an end is because the main character actually died? What? And no, we're not talking about the show's voice actor, we're talking about Caillou himself. This is a theory that's been gaining more and more traction, shedding a new light on this children's animation that was a part of millions of people's lives. And we're about to explain all the details right now about the real and dark history of the Caillou show. The real origin of the Caillou cartoon is a series of French language children's books created by Canadian authors Christine Le Hero and Helene Despoteau. The tales of an innocent boy that came to life within the pages of these stories eventually transformed into an animated show in 1997, capturing hearts and gaining many fans worldwide. The show gained global fame, primarily targeting preschool-aged children, conveying ethical lessons, and depicting authentic situations from young children's daily lives. From dealing with younger siblings, to playing with friends at daycare, and facing the challenge of the first solo bath. The show always aimed to convey values while intertwining with child psychology. It appeared to be an innocent educational and psychological formula for children, a belief that many held until recently. However, beneath all the joy and learning, a dark and shocking secret exists, only perceived in the subtext and details of Caillou's story. For many, this was the main reason why the show ended after its fifth season. Moreover, an important connection to all of this arises when we examine the origin of the name Caillou. In French, the boy's name means pebble, a type of worn and polished stone. This might seem simple, but within this detail of the children's animation, a sinister and hidden thread is woven a truth that casts a shadow over the innocent episodes that have captured the hearts of millions of children. This is because the reference to the stone isn't a joke about Caillou's head shape, who lacked hair, as many might think. Instead, it's a tribute to the French psychoanalyst Francois Dalto, who asked her child patients to bring her little stones as payment for each session. Dr. Dalto, who inspired Caillou's stories, treated young children who had a very serious condition called infantile psychosis. From here, you can start to understand a bit more about the bizarre truth behind Caillou's story. Throughout all the seasons of the show, which lasted for nearly 13 years, from 1997 to 2010, Caillou remained at the age of three to five years old. This means that the boy's life story, depicted in these episodes, takes place within a relatively short span of his early childhood. We don't see Caillou growing up, evolving, or changing grades each year of every season, as would be natural for a child. Instead, we catch only glimpses of his life over a period of up to two and a half years, which suggests that something quite strange might be behind the boy's story. He always has his friends by his side, with his closest friend being Leo, who's been with him since their first day at daycare and is of Jewish descent. Another friend is Clementine, also from daycare, of African origins, who is fearless and always seeking adventures and challenges. The incredible aspect of all of this is that it helps children understand and accept differences from an early age, allowing them to see this diversity as something natural. However, even so, it's impossible to ignore some dark and disturbing aspects of the series. In fact, to this day, many aspects of the show remain unexplained, creating peculiar mysteries. To shed light on these mysteries, we'll now tell you about the terrifying theories about Caillou. In her treatments, Dr. Dalto maintained that despite being children, all inappropriate behaviors had a logic behind them. A motivation. This motivation was often rooted in the most basic and common childish selfishness. And those who have watched Caillou know that one of the things the young boy frequently exhibits is precisely his purest selfishness in various moments. In this sense, Caillou's parents allowing him to do whatever he wanted without even calling his attention was something that the story's creators intended not to be understood by the children, but rather by their parents. That's why Caillou was always so spoiled and even irritating. And over time, this even ended up contributing to the cancellation of the series years later, as we'll discuss shortly. The bizarre theory asserts that the entire show is nothing more than a grand framework of psychological treatment that starts with parents and extends to their children, correcting attitudes and behaviors that could even become psychotic if left unchecked. The second theory, more sinister and strange, suggests that the true reason Caillou's parents never reprimanded him was because they knew their son was facing a terminal illness that would soon take him away forever. This would also be the reason why he never had hair, possibly due to the side effects of medications, while his younger sister had her beautiful red hair. By the way, at the beginning of the show, an elderly lady narrates Caillou's story to her grandchildren, always mentioning the boy's age during the time of the story she tells and using what seems to be an illustrated book. According to the second theory, what the lady held in her hand wasn't illustrated books, but rather personal photo albums with dates in Caillou's age. And that lady would actually be Caillou's mother, Doris. And her grandchildren would, in reality, be the children of Rosie, Caillou's younger sister. Now a widow, Doris relives with melancholy and sorrow the memory of her son, whose life was taken by illness when he was only five years old, at the end of the fifth season. And she imagines how she could have been a better mother at certain moments, 
but her reminiscence is filled with nostalgia for all the shared moments with her firstborn, even including those of tantrums and disobedience. Despite the creators refuting these theories, it doesn't stop us from believing that both theories make some sense and fit perfectly into the show's structure. And despite all this, as time passed, another astonishing aspect began to gain strength and be remembered, involving the children's show as well. This is because Caillou was considered the worst children's program of all time. That's how a newspaper called the National Post dubbed the Caillou cartoon shortly after its release. And the reason for that? Caillou's excessively spoiled, selfish, and often ill-mannered behavior in various episodes. Caillou's stories have included several acts, let's say, of questionable nature, like squeezing his little sister's cheeks too hard, causing her to cry in pain. Or when he threw a tantrum on the bathroom floor in one of the episodes, just out of sheer stubbornness. But the fact that a child, any child does something like that, isn't all that abnormal or bad, so to speak. But the real problem pointed out by the newspaper and many parents revolves around the fact that Caillou's parents never reprimanded him or explained to him that such behavior was wrong and completely unacceptable. They would just, figuratively speaking, pat him on the head and hug him, reinforcing the boy's wrong behavior instead of educating him, explaining what he did wrong and why. This was noticed, especially by many of the children who watched the show in their childhood, but grew up and realized that many things depicted in Caillou's episodes were entirely disapprovable. These children grew up to become mothers and fathers, and they recognized how these scenes actually represented something that should be discouraged rather than encouraged. For this reason, a large network of people began to organize movements, calling for the Caillou show to be taken off the air. Even satires were created and uploaded on YouTube, aiming to showcase how Caillou was an ill-mannered and spoiled child. After a lot of pressure and a few years, PBS Kids announced in 2021 that they were canceling the show after 20 years of airing. This decision was highly celebrated by many individuals. Actually, this was just one of several issues that surrounded this innocent children's cartoon because there have been significant problems with the show, including even lawsuits involving Caillou. Exactly as you heard, the seemingly innocent story of a little boy with lessons of friendship and family relations, surprisingly, led to one of the longest legal battles in the history of Canada involving children's content creators. This occurred right between the two creators of the show, Christine and Helene. The original Caillou book was released back in 1989, quite some time ago. The two of them independently published it since they didn't have money to pay a publisher. But Caillou quickly became a huge success, so Christine, the writer, received lucrative offers from publishers who saw the immense potential in the hairless little boy. She ended up accepting one of the offers and in 1993 signed a contract surrendering the character's rights in exchange for a substantial sum of money in addition to retaining the right to a portion of the profits from the sale of licensed Caillou products. Christine then passed her portion to Helene, the other creator, as Helene hadn't signed the contract. However, over the years, Helene realized that the Caillou brand was growing each day and becoming globally famous, yet the amount she was receiving was quite small. So, in 1996, she discovered that she wasn't receiving what she considered due and filed a lawsuit against her former friend and work partner. This ended up involving not only the two writers, but also the publisher responsible for Caillou's educational materials and the animation studio that was already producing the show set to be launched the following year. The lawsuit lasted for 10 years, only concluding in 2006. The legal entanglement even contributed, for many, to the lack of Caillou show episodes being produced during certain periods, such as when they were suspended in the years 2004 and 2005. The settlement amount was kept confidential, but it's known to involve figures in the millions of dollars. In other words, besides Caillou being a topic of discussion among its old and new fans, it was also the cause of a fierce legal battle over money. A lot of money. This further underscores how this show actually harbors dark and somber stories behind it, known to very few. This is the true and sad story behind a show that is both loved and hated by many people around the world. Comment down below if you've ever watched or knew about Caillou, or if you just learned about it now. We want to know! And don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, bye-bye!